Welcome to Lecture 18 in this series on Statistical Quality Assurance and Statistical Process Improvement. We've been talking about quality of measurement and focusing to this point mostly on measurement precision, consistency of measurement. In this module, we're going to switch focus and give our attention to issues of measurement accuracy and improving the accuracy of measurement through the use of calibration studies and appropriate statistical methodology. Calibration is an essential activity uh, in industrial uh, use of measurement devices or systems. And the basic idea is that one measures a known with a device that one wishes to uh, improve the accuracy on. Uh, one has some kind of a standard that is uh, traceable ultimately to uh, an organization like the National Institute for Standards and Technology. Uh, and the idea is to figure out how to convert what is produced by the measurement device to something that is close to the uh, truth uh, for the for the standard. The, the methodology that gets used is regression analysis or curve fitting uh, and that's what we're going to use in this module. Calibration studies, as I've just said, uh, give or use true values of measure ends or gold standard measurement values of measure ends and local measurements and seek a conversion from the local measurement to uh, the true value of the of the measure end. Uh, regression analysis is going to provide both single number conversions and measures of uncertainty uh, associated with the conversion of a Y to an X. The simplest version of this methodology is the case where Y is approximately linearly related to X that is, what's observed is approximately a linear function of the true measure end. This is a case of so-called linear calibration. And the standard statistical model for such a circumstance is one where one says that Y is constant plus a second constant times X plus random variation epsilon um, that is often taken to be normal with mean zero and standard deviation sigma, that sigma describing how much y's vary for a fixed x. And uh, in the present way of, of talking, the present discussion, uh, that sigma amounts to a kind of repeatability standard deviation. Uh, and we assume for the analysis that's going to be put forward in this module, that that standard deviation is constant across measure ends, across x. Pictorially, uh, this is an absolutely standard picture of the uh, representation of the basic simple linear regression model. There is a line that represents the relationship between x and average y. For any value of x, there is a distribution of y's that is normally distributed above or below uh, the value on the linear relationship between x and average y. And those curves are meant to have the same standard deviation uh, no matter what x is, at least over the range of uh, where the uh, measurement device is, is intended to be used. If one then collects in data pairs and goes back to a basic text in uh, elementary statistics, it's possible to find prediction limits 
for a new y that's associated with a new x. And the formula for such is this, uh, where this is the value on the least squares line. That's a table t value. That's a standard deviation for regression analysis. And then that square root uh, is the proper multiplier to uh, hedge uh, the prediction above or below the value on the least, least squares line. Uh, a good statistical package will compute and plot those limits uh, along with the least squares line through the, through the data set. Here's an example. Uh, it's an example taken from Mandel, who uh, was a famous uh, worker at what was originally the National, National Bureau of Standards, uh, and is today known as the National Institute for Standards and Technology. Uh, measurements were made on 14 specimens, and both the truth about those specimens and measurements uh, were rec were uh, recorded, and this is a jump uh, data table for uh, a for Mandel's data set. If one does simple linear regression using jump, uh, one gets uh, a a report of the analysis that looks like looks something like this. Uh, there is on this analysis report a least squares line. That's y is b0 plus b1x. And there is also printed out a root mean squared error that is uh, another name for what I've called s for line fitting. Uh, this thing right here uh, on this slide. It's possible to get, uh, so, so what's of interest here is this S for line fitting, uh, that S for line fitting uh, can be turned into confidence limits for sigma. Uh, you get confidence limits for sigma in this now familiar way of taking an S and hedging it by the square root of uh, a degrees of freedom over a chi-square value. So there's S hedged above and below by uh, the square root of a degrees of freedom over a chi-square value. Of course, those chi-square values are based on the n minus 2 degrees of freedom that's associated with regression in simple linear regression analysis. Uh, you can take the least squares line that is of the form y hat is coefficient b0 plus coefficient b1x and solve for x. Um, and that gives a way to take a y and convert it to a uh, estimated or guessed at uh, gold standard value, true value x. It also turns out to be the case that the prediction limits for y can be turned around to get confidence limits for the x corresponding to a measured value y. Uh, and that provides a, a good way to set error bounds on what a measurement y tells one uh, about the measure and x. Uh, the jump report for Mandel's data says that the least squares line is that, and the square root of mean squared error is that. And so making confidence limits for sigma, for the repeatability standard deviation, amount to taking S for line fitting and multiplying by the square root of n minus 2, number of data points is 14, minus 2 is 12, over an upper chi-square value and a lower chi-square value. And so the single number estimate of sigma is 25.23.
And if one wants to set uh, limits on that in terms of confidence limits, uh, you can get 95% confidence limits that are 18.1 to 41.8. That's using the upper 97 and a half, the, sorry, the upper two and a half percent point and the lower two and a half percent point of chi square 12 uh, as those uh, values here and there. If one solves the least squares equation for x, one gets this, and that is a way of going from uh, an observed y to uh, an estimate of the truth about uh, the, the measure in. And it's also possible to get jump or any good statistical package to make a set of 95% prediction limits for y given a value of x. In an elementary statistics course, what you're taught to do is to read up for a given x and read over and say uh, what is predicted for y. In the present context of calibration, one can turn those prediction limits around and work back the other way. That is, for a, an observed y, one can ask, well, what do we know about x? And basically, one looks at where those prediction limit uh, plots are cut and follows them down to the x-axis and uses that as uh, a way to set confidence limits on the measure end uh, if one has a particular value of y observed. One final consideration here is that it's worthwhile to note that in cases where x and y are in the same units, and one essentially hopes that uh, x is approximately equal to y, or at least uh, a, cha a, a, a unit change in x produces a unit change in y. Uh, it might be of interest uh, to ask the question, uh, does one have uh, slope 1 on the uh, relationship between x and average y because a slope slope of 1 amounts to linearity uh, in a uh, uh, in a in a measure measurement device uh, the machinery of simple linear regression gives one a way to set confidence limits on the slope of the relationship between x and average y. So here's a formula from simple linear regression. Uh, and one can use those limits to decide whether uh, beta 1 of 1 is or is not plausible. If one looks at the report on panel 7, uh, the, the slope of the least squares line is 0.882. And this standard error for the slope of the least squares line is 0 0.012, uh, so that confidence limits for uh, the slope of the relationship between x and average y are these. Those limits, those, those are 95% confidence limits. Those limits do not include 1. Uh, and so one knows <clears throat> pretty definitively uh, that this is not, uh, that Mandel's data did not come from a device that one would call linear in the sense of having constant bias. <laughs>